To develop their capacities, to develop their potential, the producers must put an end to what Marx referred to in the critique of the Gotha program, quote, the enslaving subordination of the individual to the division of labor, and therewith also the antithesis between mental and physical labor, end of quote. Indeed, expanding the capacity of the people requires the uniting of mental and manual labor. Not only does the combination of education with productive labor make it possible to increase the efficiency of production, this is also, as Marx pointed out in Capital, the only method of producing fully developed human beings. That's a quote from Capital. The answer then to the truncation and the crippling of people is variation of labor, fluidity of functions, mobility of the worker in all directions. That's what's meant by the development of human capacity. The partially developed individual, Marx argued, must be replaced by the, quote, totally developed individual for whom the different social functions are different modes of activity he takes up in turn, end of quote. So there can be no surprise that Marx looked forward to a recombining of head and hand, the uniting of mental and, mental and physical labor, to a time when the individual worker can call his own muscles into play under the control of his own brain. That's the way to ensure, in the words of the critique of the Gotha program again, quote, that the productive forces have also increased with the all-round development of the individual and that all the springs of cooperative productive wealth flow more abundantly. So what kind of productive relations, then, can provide the conditions for the full development of human beings? Only those where there's conscious cooperation among associated producers only those in which the goal of production is that of the workers themselves. And clearly, this must mean not just simply the workers in individual workplaces, they must be the goals of workers in society, workers in their communities. In other words, implicit in the emphasis upon this key link of human development and practice is our need to be able to develop through democratic, participatory, and protagonistic activity in every aspect of our lives through revolutionary practice in our communities, our workplaces, and in all our social institutions, we produce ourselves as rich human beings, rich in capacities and needs, in contrast to the impoverished and crippled human beings that capitalism produces. It's a concept of democracy in practice, democracy as practice, democracy as protagonism. Democracy in this sense, protagonistic democracy in the workplace, protagonistic democracy in neighborhoods, communities, communes, is the democracy of people who are transforming themselves into revolutionary subjects. Now, let me add something to my written text from yesterday's discussion that occurred to me, that one should understand that this conception of democracy as practice, as protagonism, involves the rejection of a different concept of democracy. Once you begin from the focus on human development and practice, that key link, you must reject the adequacy of democracy as consumer choice. In other words, democracy is you know, where you are given brand A and brand B, and you're able to choose between brand A and brand B, and you, of course, do it in an individual choice. Uh, that is the concept of democracy as consumer choice. It's a concept of democracy as passive, as in contrast to this concept of democracy as practice as a process of human development. Well, okay. Better? A little bit? Okay. What I'm describing here is one element in the concept of socialism for the 21st century which is a concept of socialism as a particular organic system of production, distribution, and consumption. Social production organized by workers is essential for developing the capacities of producers and building new relations, relations of cooperation and solidarity. And if workers don't make decisions in their workplaces and communities and develop their capacities in that process, we can be certain that someone else will. Someone else will make those decisions. Someone else will develop their capacities. In short, protagonistic democracy in all our workplaces is essential for the full development of the producers. But there are other elements in this 
socialist combination, which I explore in the book, The Socialist Alternative. The society we want to build is one which recognizes, in the words of the Communist Manifesto, quote, that the free development of each is the condition for the free development of all. But how can we ensure that our communal social productivity is directed to the free development of all instead of to satisfy the private goals of capitalists, groups of individuals, or state bureaucrats? A second side of what Chavez in January 2007 called the elementary triangle of socialism concerns the distribution of means of production. Social ownership of the means of production is that second side. So the first side, or one side, social production organized by workers. A second side, social ownership of the means of production. And of course, it's essential to distinguish social ownership from state ownership. Uh, social ownership implies a profound democracy, one in which people act as subjects, uh, as producers and as members of society. But our common ownership of the means of production and cooperation in the process of production sufficient for ensuring overall human development? What kind of people are produced when we relate to each other through an exchange relationship? When we try to get the best possible deal for ourselves? That brings us to the third side of this socialist triangle, which is production for the purpose of satisfaction of communal needs and communal purposes. There the focus is upon the importance of basing our productive activity upon the recognition of our common humanity and our needs as members of a human society family. In short, the premise is the development of a solidarian society, one in which we go beyond self-interest and where through our activity we both build solidarity among people um, and at the same time produce each other, produce ourselves differently. Now, let me just say in relationship to Michael Hart's presentation and discussion yesterday, a little before, that when in the book I talk about the, the, the struggles related to each side of this socialist triangle and related to the whole question of production for the purpose of, common, of, of communal needs and communal purposes is the importance of the struggle for the expansion of the commons. Uh, the struggle for not only free you know, ed education through tuition, but free buses, free health care, though all those attempts to decommodify the things that capitalism is constantly trying to commodify. These three sides of the socialist triangle form members of a whole. They're parts of a structure in which all the elements coexist simultaneously and support one another. That's from the poverty of philosophy. Its premises are the results of the system, and the products are social ownership of the means of production, social production organized by workers, and a solidarian orientation toward communal needs and purposes. But the very fact that we're talking about an organic system emphasizes the interdependence of these sides. In socialism as an organic system, as in all organic systems, each economic relation presupposes every other in its socialist economic form, and everything positive is thus also a presupposition. This is the case with every organic system. That's Marx in the Grundrisse. Now, that's the concept of an organic system. But of course, an organic system doesn't fall from the sky. A new system never produces its premises you know, by itself. Rather, when a new system emerges, it necessarily inherits premises from the old system. Its premises and presuppositions Marx talks about in the Grundrisse are historic presuppositions, historic premises which are produced outside the system. So every new system, as it emerges, is inevitably, in the words of the critique of the Gotha program, in every respect, economically, morally, and intellectually, still stamped with the birthmarks of the old society. 